What's up guys, the January Patreon rewards are now available. Mana Drain, Edgar Markov, and Korvold Fae Cursed King are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves or clicking the link in the description. What's going on guys and welcome to another episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of visions a very old set actually released in 97 I believe uh, lots of really awesome cards in this one So uh, at the top of the list, of course, we have vampiric tutor uh, We dropped down a little bit with natural order, but it's still a very powerful card Of course, we've got teferi's puzzle box necromancy lots of really awesome stuff Hopefully, we get to pull one of those awesome cards today. Uh, I've not necessarily had the best of luck with Visions uh, packs in the past, but I do believe we've opened a few already. Uh, of course, we're going to go through this as if we are drafting the set. I don't. I, I did not play during this time. I was literally like four when this set came out. Uh, but still, I've seen a lot of the cards. Hopefully, we can get a good idea of what's the best uh, pick here. So, our first card here is Free Wind Falcon. Uh, it is a 1-1 one, one for 1 and a white, and it has flying and protection from red. Pretty straightforward card. Uh, it's a little underpowered at 1-1 one, one for 2, but that flying really offsets that, just that it can poke through for some damage. Uh, on top of that, it has pro red, which is not the most exciting thing in the world, but will definitely have some random upside against certain decks uh, in the limited format. So you might be able to get something good off of this. I don't know, though. It's a pretty underwhelming first pick for sure, so I really doubt that this will be it. Uh, but it's not a bad start to the pack. It's a perfectly fine flyer. We have to keep in mind, during this time, creatures were not necessarily the focus of the, the magic game as a whole. Uh, we had a lot more powerful spells, but not necessarily quite as powerful creatures. So uh, we'll, we'll probably see that as we go through uh, looking at all these creatures, but not a bad start. Uh, Funeral Charm is one black for an instant, and you choose one. So target player chooses and discards a card, or target creature gets plus two plus minus one, excuse me, until the end of the turn, or target creature gains Swamp Walk until the end of the turn. So uh, if you don't know what Swamp Walk is, it's a bit of an outdated mechanic nowadays, but uh, essentially what it means is if the opponent controls a swamp, that creature is then unblockable, uh, which is really nice for that random upside, but obviously not going to be the case all the time. It's very similar to the Falcon in that, you know, it's very particular to a specific color. Uh, this card has a little bit more versatility, though, which I really like. Uh, discarding a card at instant speed for one mana is pretty good. Obviously, the opponent does get to choose what that card is, which is a little bit of a downside. Uh, but the fact that you can do it at instant speed is really, really nice because that just means you can blank a draw from them. Uh, if they're top decking, for instance, you can let them draw their card and then funeral charm it right away. Uh, get rid of it. So lots of utility there. Uh, on top of that, you could pick off something like a falcon with a card like this. So you can use it as a small removal spell or a pump spell, depending on the, the board state and the creatures that you've got. And then, of course, that random unblockable swamp walk is actually really nice, too. So, uh, so far out of these two, I actually really, really like Funeral Charm. I think it's a solid pick. Uh, not the most amazing card, but super, super efficient and very flexible. Uh, Keeper of Kukas, I hope I'm saying that correctly, is a 1-1 one, one for 1 red. Uh, and you can pay 1 red and it gets protection from red until the end of the turn. Lots of red on this card. Uh, really don't like it other than the fact that it's a goblin. Uh, I don't know how much synergy is there for this, uh, but I would imagine that there's at least some. Uh, and so I do like it for that, but honestly, other than that, it's a very huge just kind of waste of mana uh, to just sit there, pump this up, and, or not pump it up, but give it pro-red every turn. Seems kind of ridiculous. Uh, the the one, one for one just means it's an okay one drop. So at worst, I guess it's not terrible, but I'd probably much rather have really either of the other two cards that we've gotten so far. Uh, Bull Elephant is a 4-4 for 3 and a green. When it comes into play, return two forests you control to your owner's hand or bury Bull Elephant. Now, bury just means destroy. Uh, for those old school players, they'll remember that. Um, this is actually just kind of an okay creature. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think I would play it solely because uh, losing two forests is pretty huge and limited. You really want to continue playing threats and move up the chain. Uh, so moving backwards two turns is huge, but uh, four, 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 four 
is actually kind of you know a bit rare uh for for creatures in this time period so it is actually a very powerful creature but i unfortunately that setback is just a little bit too big uh to really want to play this i think it's probably okay later in the game you wouldn't necessarily play this on turn four uh but you could hold off maybe play a few of your other threats first then play this uh, in which case it might make a bit more sense but then you're kind of pushing it to the later turns. It's not quite as good anyway. So still on the, the Funeral Charm bandwagon for now. Uh, Vision Charm, uh, part of the charm cycle, obviously, is an instant for one blue. Choose one target artifact phases out uh, or put the top four cards from target player's library into his or her graveyard. Uh, or all lands of one type are basic lands of your choice until the end of the turn. Uh, that basic land thing in particular is a very blue mechanic. We've seen that in the past a lot. Less so lately, uh, it just doesn't have as much of an impact as we've seen in certain areas, but it is still a, an interesting effect, I will say. I don't think it's a very good one for limited. Uh, target artifact phases out. You could use that as protection uh, for some of your artifacts, but I don't really like that you're reliant, uh, relying on a protection card to make a card good. Uh, that seems kind of bad. The top four cards of their library going into their graveyard, pretty useful. Uh, that... I mean, it's self, or it's either self-mill or uh, it, it could just be mill for the opponent, which would be actually pretty good. Uh, but I don't think that that's a dedicated strategy, so I don't think it's good enough to really go for in this. Again, I'm still in the camp of Funeral Charm being the best card here. Uh, this does give you flexibility, which I like, but I don't really love the options as much uh, in comparison to Funeral Charm. Uh, Dark Privilege is one and a black for an enchanted creature. Uh, the creature gets plus one, plus one. You can sacrifice a creature to regenerate the enchanted creature. Uh, I don't love this. I don't think this is enough upside. It does give you a really good way to protect a bomb, which is great. Other than that, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, the, the fact is you're trading so many resources to make this good. Either the, I, if you tag this onto a creature and they use a removal spell, obviously it's a two for one. On top of that, if they use a removal spell and you try and regenerate the creature, you're still one for one in yourself uh, by destroying one of your creatures. So I don't really love this. Adults have much to say in the way of positive with this card. Uh, and so unfortunately, I'm going to pass it here. Uh, Dwarven Vigilantes is a two, two for two and a red. Uh, it attacks if it attacks and it's not blocked you may choose to have it deal no combat damage this turn if you do it deals an amount of damage equal to its power to target creature uh, that's actually a really cool uh, ability I don't think that it's super useful only because it is a 2-2 two -two. Um, and I may be undervaluing it a bit here, but I feel like uh, it would be very easy to block this. Um, that being said, this does actually get rid of a lot of creatures, which is cool. But I think nine times out of ten, you're just going to end up trading it off for an opposing 2-2 two -two or something like that. Uh, Funeral Charm, I still think, gives you the most flexibility and leaves you the most open. This is a good card, I think. So there's reason to maybe take it over the Funeral Charm. But again, having not played this set ever, um, <laughs> I'm going to have to go Funeral Charm over it. Uh, River Boa is a 2-1 for 1 and a green. It does have Island Walk, so same thing as Swamp Walk, except if the opponent controls an island, it's unblockable. Uh, and then it has a built-in regenerate mechanic, so for 1 green, you can just regenerate this, uh, making it very difficult to actually get rid of. Uh, Funeral Charm is one of those cards that could kill this technically, but... Uh, the fact that you can regenerate it makes it really difficult to really do that. So I actually kind of like this card. It's a very simple card, very straightforward two drop. Random upside, obviously, against blue decks, but obviously pretty resilient to removal. I think that makes it a very strong contender, potentially over Funeral Charm. I think we'll see what the rest of the pack holds, but I really like both of these cards. Uh, Remedy is an instant for one and a white. Prevent up to five damage total to any number of target creatures and or players. I really don't like cards like this. The prevent damage cards, unless it's a full-on fog effect, and even then in limited, I don't like it. Uh, I just don't think they're ever worth it. Uh, they don't do enough. They stall the game versus moving the game forward. Uh, and so generally speaking, no matter what, if I see a card like this, I tend to pass it. Uh, Betrayal is an enchant creature for one blue. Uh, play only on a creature an opponent controls. Uh, if the enchanted creature becomes tapped, you get to draw a card. I don't love this in limited, I will say. I think there are instances where you could do a lot of cool stuff with this in like commander where you could force tap and stuff like that. But uh, unfortunately, in limited, they can just play around it by not tapping it. Um, it's pretty straightforward. And honestly, I think a lot of times, you know, card advantage is great. Don't get me wrong. 
But if it, they're in the right position, they could just be winning off of an attack with the creature or something like that, in which case it's not really getting the, the full value out of it. So I don't love this card here. Uh, I do think there are certain instances, though, that you could really go crazy with a card like this. Uh, Infantry Veteran is a 1-1 one, one for 1 white. Uh, tap it and target attacking creature gets plus 1, plus 1 until the end of the turn. Uh, I think this is just a decent one drop. I don't think it beats out the other cards that we've got so far, but the fact that this pumps other attacking creatures is really nice just because it means your opponent is going to have to do something about it or at least consider it every time they go to block. Uh, this obviously is going to get outclassed on the field quite, quite easily, <laughs> um, but the fact that it has relevance after the fact is really, really nice. So uh, I do like this card. I think it would be worth it to take if you were in just like a go wide uh, or really not even necessarily go wide, but just creature focused uh, white deck. But here, I don't think it's worth it. Uh, three Wishes is an instant for one and two blue. Uh, take the top three cards from your library, look at them, and set them aside face down. You may play those cards as though they were in your hand. At the beginning of your next turn, uh, bury any of those cards not played. Really interesting card. It essentially adds three cards to your hand for a turn, which is cool, but you're also utilizing a lot of mana. I, I guess you do it at the end of their turn, uh, and then you get those three cards on your next turn. That seems pretty cool. I don't like it as much because it's not as aggressive. Uh, in, in Limited in particular, the games, despite the creatures not necessarily being the most powerful, games are generally won off of creatures. You, you swing in, you attack, you deal damage. This helps you, I guess, get more creatures, technically, uh, hopefully, I guess, which is nice, but I'd rather just take a solid creature. Uh, and so I do like this card. This is actually a really interesting one. I don't know if it's the it's a strong card or not necessarily. I think it could be quite good, but I don't think I would take it here. I'd rather take a solid pick, uh, which we've already got two pretty solid ones. So uh, we'll see what we get, though. Uh, Vampirism uh, is one and a black for an enchanted creature. Uh, draw a card at the beginning of the upkeep uh, of the turn after Vampirism comes into play. Uh, the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one for each other creature you control. All other creatures you control get minus one, minus one. That is an interesting card. I don't think it's good. Uh, it can't be good. It, there's, uh, it replaces itself, which is nice. So you're not necessarily down on cards, which is good. Uh, that does kind of get around the two for one aspect of it a little bit. Um, but the fact that you minus one, minus one, all of your creatures... In a, in a format where we're seeing a lot of low power creatures, that seems quite bad. Um, I don't know because you do really power up that one creature, but I think that it's just a little bit too easy to just remove a creature. So probably not my pick here. Um, this is one of those cards that I don't know exactly where to evaluate it. I don't know if it's good or not. Uh, it very easily could be and I'm misinterpreting, uh, but feel free, I guess, correct me in the comment section below, but I don't think this is a good card. Uh, Talrum Piper uh, is a 3-3 three, three for 4 and a red. All creatures with flying able to block the Piper do so. Uh, I think this is honestly just kind of an okay creature. Normally I wouldn't say that because it is very high costed, but it encourages blocking on the opponent's side, which is cool. And honestly, a 3-3 three, three for 5 uh, in this time period, probably not too far off of what it would normally be. So uh, I don't hate this card. I very much like the other cards that we have more. Uh, I think Riverbow in particular, if we're evaluating creature to creature, is just much stronger solely because it's it's going to be able to regenerate, block for days, do whatever you need it to do. So uh, as much as I don't think that this is a terrible creature, I think the Riverbow is much better. And our rare uh, is Matopi Golem. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Is a 3-3 three, three for five of any color. Pay one, regenerate, and put a negative one, negative one counter on the Golem. I like the fact that you can regenerate it, and I like the fact that it goes into any deck, but you're limited right off the bat with that negative one, negative one counter. Uh, I don't think that that's good. I'd rather have the river, river Boa, honestly, because it can regenerate as many times as we'd like it to. And I do honestly think between these two, it does turn into River Boa is the best pick. Um, that may be incorrect. Again, please correct me in the comment section uh, if, if you drafted during this time or anything like that. Uh, again, I did not, but River Boa seems like a very strong pick. So I'm going to say that. Feel free again, disagree in the comment section. But if you enjoyed this video, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack a Pack video.